We're down in the city to talk about one of Chevrolet's updated vehicles, something the auto enthusiast crowd's pretty excited about. The question is, is everyone else excited about it? We're here to talk today about the Chevy Cruze Diesel on rumblestrip.net and 10 minute test drive. So it was a couple years ago when we first drove the cruise diesel and at the time we thought it was actually quite good. Unfortunately we didn't get a chance to put that, re that review out because the hard drive it was on went a little wonky and we ended up having a bunch of corrupted data and this review was part of it. So two years on, how is the Chevy Cruze? And the answer to that is it's still a really good car. Is it the best in the class? It depends on what you're looking for, to be honest with you. Uh, our preference is still Ford Focus being the best one, best vehicle in its class. However, some people don't like the aggressive styling, some people aren't looking for some of the sporty dynamics, and for that, the Chevy Cruze actually works quite well. Um, the interior materials in it are very good, certainly better than your standard Jetta. Uh, you know, the Jetta can be done up in a higher level trim so that it's pretty good but uh, right off the bat it's not, but the Chevy Cruze is the interior on this thing is actually quite good. And one of the things we really dig uh, is, as far as an interior treatment in here is there's this very textured fabric uh, as an insert on the dash and on the doors. And we'll show you a picture of that. And it's, it's something different. It's something we really haven't seen and it's cool. And I hope to see more of it just because it is different and it does, uh, it, it does give some texture to the interior. It, it's just nice. It, it's, uh, it's well done. Hopefully it wears well. So the big thing about this version of the Chevy Cruze is it is the diesel model. And that's a big deal because for the enthusiast community who've been screaming for diesels in America, we finally have one in an American car, in a small American car, so that people can really see what all the noise is all about. Does it deliver? Pretty much, to be honest with you, pretty much. Uh, we've had it for just a few days. We uh, uh, got a call at the last minute. Our, our person who handles the Chevy fleet had an opening. They said, I got it. You, if you want it, I can give it to you for about four days. We'll take it. So it happened just happened to be in a time where we were going to be doing a lot of driving back and forth. So uh, we've been driving about 90 or about 90 miles a day, yeah, close to 90 miles a day. And so we've put almost 400 miles on this vehicle. Our average, and that includes some, uh, some city driving, uh, is right at about 40 miles to the gallon. On the highway, when we look at the instant, we were in the high 40s. In the city, it's, you know, uh, right about 29, 30 miles to the gallon pretty consistently. So, I mean, who's going to complain about that, really? It's got great throttle response, although there is just the tiniest bit of turbo lag. I wish could be dialed out, but it sort of is what it is. Really, that's our only complaint about the motor. If you keep it from about 1800 to three grand, you can ride the torque wave and this thing just scoots nicely. Um, it has pretty good acceleration. Let me spun the wheels a little bit. How many, how many you know, front wheel drive diesel spin the wheels? Hey, cool. works for me. Um, all right, paper is a little damp from this one, but still. It's, um, you know, it, it, we haven't sat there and like hammered on it because most of our driving has been putting off and going to the highway and then get driving on the highway and pounding through the city. But we have no complaints. It rides really well. The interior is quiet. Uh, one of the things people worry about is diesel noise, you know, the diesel racket. Honestly, cruising on the highway at 2,000 RPM, 2,200 RPM, it's quiet. You don't even notice it. Uh, you know, at idle, is there a little diesel clatter? Yeah, there is a little bit. But it's not obnoxious. It's not. Uh, it's not that much of a thing. In fact, we really didn't care. So then again, we like diesels, right? But I don't think it's a deterrent for people. I really don't. Um, you know, it, there's no smoke. There's, uh, you know, it, it sounds it sounds actually pretty good. 
when you when you get on it, as you're going to see here a little bit, as we jump on the highway and cross three lanes so we can make our exit on the other side. The joys of driving in Michigan. Um, but yeah, it gets up to speed just just fine. I mean, it cruises down the down the highway at 80 miles an hour like it's nothing. So it does exactly what you want it to do. It rides well. It's reasonably quiet. Uh, it gets very good fuel economy. As I said, the, the handling, even though the, there's much more weight in the front end uh, because of the diesel engine, I think it's like 150 to 200 pounds. I have to double check that one, but um, may not be that much. But there definitely is more weight associated with the diesel engine. We haven't noticed um, the handling being harsher or worse. So General Motors did a, a really good job dialing in the suspension settings for it. One of the things that we hope is that the general public gets in and drives this thing because any qualms they may have about diesel of, you know, stories from the past from 30 years ago, well, look, it's completely irrelevant. It's a completely different world, okay? People still had carburetors were still common on new cars uh, when the last time the American, uh, the American car manufacturers started putting on diesels. I don't think they'd really notice a, a whole lot of difference between this and a, ga and, and a gas engine until they went to go fill it up and they're going 30, 40% longer on a tank of fuel. And this really is a trial balloon for Chevrolet and, and the cruise diesel. Here's a fairly affordable vehicle, although this one gets a little bit pricey for, for the class. Um, but it's a chance for people to drive it in something that's you know comfortable and uh, non-threatening in a way and see if they like it. And if there's a good take rate for it, we're gonna start seeing more diesels here because of fuel, for fuel economy reasons. That, that the government has mandated you have to meet certain fuel economy uh, criteria. And really there's gonna be two options, smaller gasoline engines that are turbocharged, turbo diesels, and some sort of hybrid. Well, as a car person, as an enthusiast person, I'm the smaller engines with, with turbos, okay. But turbo diesel engines, yes, absolutely. I'd rather have that with the extra torque and the really good fuel economy than the complications of dealing with hybrids and plug-ins and all that, to be honest, and just the way it is. And they usually tend to be more fun to drive, to be honest with you, if they're tuned right. So, really would encourage people to get in and just drive it, try it, see what you think. How does it compare you know, in the class? Well, really the only other small car like this with a diesel that's offered uh, in the US is the Jetta diesel. And it compares very well to that. Pricing, okay, this is gonna be a little bit more, but the difference is that the Cruise comes almost fully optioned. Now this one has a couple more options in it, so it's right about $28,000, or just a little over $28,000. And the Jetta can be had for less but the interior of the Jetta is not as good as the interior in the Cruze. It can be pretty good once you option it up on high level trim, uh, but even then, I, I don't think it's, it, it, some of the services are, are good and the touch materials, and as we said, the, the cloth fabric that they put in here, it, it just gives it a unique, uh, unique feel to it. So like it, the infotainment system in here is much better uh, than what's in the, the Volkswagen. The overall sound, well, if you get the fender system in the Volkswagen, we might have a, you know, that might be a little bit better as far as sound quality, but as far as interface and uh, ease to use, I gotta say the, the Chevy MyLink system in here has actually been very good and has very good voice recognition. There has been no need to enunciate very clearly and to speak slowly while doing so, so that the computer understands everything and doesn't dial the wrong number or select the wrong station for you in the radio. Speak in a normal tone of voice, you know, maybe you can't talk New York fast, but it's been, it's been really good. I've been very impressed with it. I wish the screen was just a little bit bigger and, and there's the reach to uh, for some of the touch stuff is, is a little long at times, but it's workable. Uh, it's certainly better than a lot of stuff that's out here today. So to wrap up, what do we think of this? Well, first off, we're very happy that Chevrolet has made the leap and put a diesel in a small vehicle. It gets really good gas mileage, excuse me, really good fuel economy, fuel mileage, because it's diesel is a fuel, it's not gas. It drives well. 
it's quiet, it's comfortable. You could use a little more backseat room, okay, but it, it's used, the backseat's definitely usable. Good trunk space. You gotta drive this thing and try it out and see what all the hype's about. We think it lives up to it. Now it's up to you to go out and see for yourself.